In this video, we'll finish the problem that we started last time about allocating the seismic force to individual components of the SFRS. This applies to flexible diaphragms only because of the way that we've assumed that the diaphragm acts as a simply supported beam between lines of resistance. Previously, we already found the forces on each line of resistance. Here, we'll consider what we do when we have multiple components of the SFRS on a single line of resistance. Here, we're showing the expression for the rigidity of a cantilever wall. The cantilever wall is the system that we have in our example. What rigidity is, is a simplified expression for the stiffness of an element. The difference between the rigidity and stiffness is that rigidity uses some nominal values for the moduli and for the thickness. And so because these are made up values, it's not correct in an absolute sense, but it's still good for comparing rigidities or for comparing stiffnesses. Let's move now to pencil and paper. Here we have our example. You'll recall that we have a two-story building with these seismic loads given, a larger plan on level one, a smaller plan on level two. In the last video, we already calculated the forces along line A, B, C, and D for the two different levels, and those values are summarized right here. I'm also copying the expression for rigidity. We only need to concern ourselves with lines A and D and A on the upper level. And the question then is, how does this force divide out into A1 and A2? Or how does this force divide out into A1 and A2? We're gonna allocate these forces proportionally to their stiffnesses or to their rigidity. So the shear in any given element is the shear along the line of resistance times the rigidity of that element divided by the sum of the rigidities along that line of resistance. So in this case, we need to look at the rigidities of A1 and A2. And the calculation will be similar for A, for D, and for A on the upper story because the dimensions are all the same. Let's look here at the rigidity of A1. The rigidity of A1, 0 0.4, the height of the wall, right here, 8 feet, D is the length of the wall, 8 feet, and this is cubed, although it doesn't matter because that's 1, plus 3 times 8 over 8. We would calculate this to be 1.4286. The rigidity for A2 is a very similar expression, 0 0.4. The height of the wall is still 8. The depth of the wall, however, A2 right here is this 10 feet here, and that's cubed. Evaluate this, this gives us 2.2482. So we'll notice that adding just two extra feet of length really has a significant influence on the rigidity of these elements. A longer shear wall is going to be much more effective than two shorter shear walls that add up to the same length. We can calculate the sum of the r's because we'll need this so that we can plug into this equation here. So add up these two numbers and we get 3.6768. So over here we can leave ourselves a little bit of space and calculate the shear in A1 is equal to shear along the line of resistance. So we're looking at line of resistance A. We'll specify for now that we're looking at level 1. And so the force in line A on level 1 is 21.4290 kips. We're multiplying this by the rigidity of A1, 1.4286, divided by the total, 3.6768. And we can calculate that this is 8.33 kips. 
This, by the way, is 39%. Shear along wall A2. Well, we still have the same force of 21.4290 that we're dividing, but now we're using this rigidity of 2.2482 divided by the total, again, 3.6768. And this evaluates out to 13.10 kips. This is 61%. We can check, by the way, 13 plus 8 is 21. 33 plus 10 is 43. So 21.43 is what we have here. So we can confirm that these two individual forces indeed add up to the total. So now we've taken care of level one, line A. Line D, if we look at the fact that this force is for lines A and D, the dimensions of these walls are the same as the dimension of these walls. So the rigidities are the same, the calculation is the same. So nothing changes, these are simply the same. All that we need to do now is to look at our top story. So I'll scoot up a little bit. I'll resketch level two. We have the same configuration, eight feet and 10 feet for A1 and for A2. And so if we look at the calculation that we previously did, this is the same because the rigidities are the same. We're still using eight feet of length and 10 feet of length. So the relative rigidities are the same. The total rigidity is the same. This quotient is the same, the percentage is the same. What's going to change is this value right here. So for level two, the shear in A1 is going to be equal to now 25 kips. Where do these 25 kips come from? Right here. The shear in level two on line A is 25 kips times 39%, which is the ratio that we calculated here. And of course, I would keep more decimals, so 39% isn't the number that I would plug into the calculator. Once I do that, I get 9.71 kips. Similarly, the shear in A2 is equal to 25 kips times the ratio of 61%. Again, 61% not being the number I plug into the calculator, I would plug in more accuracy, 15.71. 29 kips. And so we have what we need. To summarize, level 1, line A1, and line A2 is the same as level 1, line D1, and D2. Level 2, line A1 and A2. Let's summarize the problem. So what I'm showing first of all on the upper left hand side are the summaries for all the forces that we found so far. The values for B on level 2 and B and C on level 1 we found in the previous video. The values for lines A1 and A2 and D1 and D2 on both levels we just found in this video. At the bottom of the page I've reproduced the plan views and the elevation. And on the upper right I've shown the individual walls and the forces that are acting on them. So now we just need to go one by one and go from the list on the left onto the walls on the right and find which forces are acting. So let's start on wall A1 at the top 9.71 at the bottom 8.33 wall A2 at the top 15.29 one level down 13.10 wall B at the top we have 25 kips at the bottom we have 28.57 kips you'll notice that while C and D1 and D2 are only single story walls we look at level 1 for wall C 28.57 D1 8.33 D2 13.10 so these are just now cantilevers. If you flip these on their side, you know exactly how to analyze them. You can calculate shear force diagrams, 
you can calculate bending moment diagrams. And that's how you would then proceed to analyze these elements to actually design, in this case we're assuming they're concrete, to actually design the reinforcement and all the detailing that you need to do. But with this, we have finished with the process of taking these two forces, the 50 kips and the 100 kips, and dividing them out, allocating them to each of the individual elements of the seismic force resisting system so that we can now design each of those elements. In a subsequent video, we'll see how we analyze the diaphragm itself.